Okay, my next guest, um, Rena, she has been involved in a toxic relationship for over 25 years. She's a mother of two. Uh, she's a grandmother of two. She's a professional. Uh, she's not some slouch. Uh, she's not uh, uh, somebody that's been on drugs most of her life, and she's delusional. I've talked to her for a long time over the phone. We interviewed her last week. I'm bringing her back on because she has valuable, valuable information that I believe the Holy Spirit is going to to speak through her. Serena, we talked about gaslighting last week, um, and I think we need to touch on it again. For those of you guys who don't know, know what gaslighting is, let me explain something to you, me being from Hollywood. It's probably the only term I know that actually came from a Hollywood movie. Okay, In other words, what I'm saying is, most of the time, Hollywood makes movies about things that already exist, you know, uh, fads, terms, definitions, and they'll base a title off of it. This was something that was thought up. It was about a, a guy who marries a woman. She's wealthy. He wants to drive her crazy. So he starts, uh, you know, shaking the lights at night upstairs and starts moving her clothes around, all this stuff. And it's called gaslighting. It was a movie in the 40s. Well, from that came the term gaslighting because people understood there's so many people doing it in real life. Raina, what do you say about gaslighting? Can you add... Tell anybody anything more about gaslighting we didn't explain last week. David, I think gaslighting is probably one of the underlying foundations of uh, mental and emotional abuse, because if, if you're strong enough in yourself that you trust your own perceptions, you trust your judgment, you, you can fight off somebody else's opinion. But if you have been beaten down and you have been manipulated uh, psychologically to where you don't trust yourself and you usually the the abuser will um, separate you from everybody. They'll do the triangulation thing where they're telling you that your family and friends are saying this about you. Unknowns to you, they're telling the family and the friends that you're saying this about them and you, you get completely isolated. So part of the trauma bond is you, you, this is the only voice you hear and they become so big in your mind that you you really understand you can't function you can't live if it's your husband if it's your parent your very livelihood your very ability to eat and have a place to live comes from this one person and you need them desperately and you trust them implicitly and it just completely undermines your your own self so rena help me out here um how does a person fall into this? I mean, you don't wake up one morning and go, wow, I'm delusional because I'm so confused because they've, and by the way, before I ask you that question, I need to, to tell the audience, the, the gatherer or something in case you weren't here last week. Your husband would actually move furniture around and yeah. tell you that it either was there or wasn't there. So he was yeah. messing with your mind doing all this, yes. you know, how did how does a person get in that situation? I mean, how does that happen? Well, part of that is I came up in an abusive household. So it wasn't that different than what I lived. Okay. But also what people truly don't understand until you're out of it and your mind starts to clear up and you look across it and you see it as a whole, you're shocked. But in it, you're fighting today's battle. He's ticked off because you didn't cook what he liked today. He's ticked off because the kids walked through his movie. He's... You know, every little thing is is a is something. Um, okay. We we had a hole through every wall and every door, but I didn't call it violence because he didn't hit me. No one ever told me that calling me names was started with B, refusing to talk to me at all, weeks of silent treatment, withholding every bit of affection, respect, marital relations, everything. No one told me that was abuse. But you, yeah, you know, society has called, um, we, we think of domestic abuse, and society has put a label on it that it must be physical. But domestic has, but domestic doesn't say anything about physical. Domestic is, is a relationship abuse. It can be verbal, it can be emotional, mental, uh, and physical. What you went through most of the time was everything except physical. However, physical, end, it ended up being physical. Right. Yes. My father was was incredibly physically abusive. And yeah. that was my perception of abuse. I didn't know that any of this other stuff was abuse. 
And, so, and you don't know when they're when they're doing so much of it covertly. If he was a malignant narcissist, an outright um, the kind who beat you up all the day, all the time, the kind who broke up bars and all of that stuff, you know the type. You yeah. would know you were being abused. These head games, you don't even know, and so much of it goes on with the people around you that are now proxy abusers. You truly do not know it's abuse. Okay. So do you believe that a lot of them, I'm going to use women as an example, because you're a woman, that they, they picked up these demons when they were children, uh, they were sexually abused, physically abused, yelled at. These are demons. Okay. Do you believe that as children, they, 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 they pick up these demons and they carry the demons with them uh, through adolescence, through their teen years, into their adult years? I think it's very possible. I, I've got every book that Derek Prince ever put out. I still listen to him on YouTube regularly, and he would tell you that. He will tell you that every um, incident with sexual abuse would bring a Jezebel spirit. Mm -hmm. I know that just the spirit of uh, rejection, the mm -hmm. spirit of, um, I, I just think a lack of self-confidence, all of that comes that you're, you're surrounded with it and it forms who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Rena, when we come back, I'm going to ask you a question about the demons of toxic relationships that you actually saw a demon in your relationship. Yes. We're going to talk about that. And we're also going to talk about program multiples, how they're programmed to actually as a baby to actually grow up and team up with specific people for the purpose of tormenting their life, gaslighting them and sucking them into these toxic relationships. Stay with me. We're talking to Rena. We'll be right back. So here we are at Sun Studios. Uh, we're on the set uh, filming Last Evangelist. Let's go into the studios. I want to show you some stuff. Come on in. All right. So you can see here. Oh, there's Ruben. Hey, Ruben. He's the guy that gets all of our equipment together. Hey, Ruben. He's a electrician, does uh, gaffing, gripping. Uh, but as you see, this is a very cool place. Here we are in the studio. And what I like about being in this place is it's very independent. You know, the thing with Last Evangelist is I can do what I want to do. I don't have to yield to studios, to corporations, to investors. You know, it's because of partners like you that makes it possible for guys like me to tell the story that I feel like I need to tell. And information you guys need to have, you know. I, I, this to me is more than a TV series. It's more than a movie. It's like a movement, you know, because of the way we're doing this, um, you know, partner funded. And that way we can do whatever it is we want to do. Let me introduce you, everybody. So there's uh, Ali. She does script. We got uh, Harmony on makeup. She need on tech. And uh, uh, you can see we have a really nice grid up there. You see the grid? toward the uh, final, I guess you could call the final round of crowdfunding for Last Evangelist. Um, the first episode we're doing, 
We need to raise $25,000. we are up to almost $19,000. And you know what? I got to tell you, me, a little faith. I'm going, Lord, that's a lot of money. But you guys have been so gracious. You've stepped up to the plate. Please uh, uh, dial evangelist at um, 71777. Uh, put in the word evangelist, dial 71777, put in the word evangelist, and and let's get up to the 25,000. Let's move on. We don't need Hollywood money. We don't need investors. It's just you and I, God's people. Then we put it on God's platform. We don't need Netflix. We don't need any of that stuff. It's going to be within the body of Christ for the first time. And I'm so excited, and I praise God for that. Thank you so much. Or you can go to lastevangelist.com. And you can uh, sign the newsletter or donate. You can also become a fundraiser, too. Okay. And I think that's important, too, because you can go out to tell your family and friends and get involved. Rena, did you have anything else about gaslighting you wanted to, uh, to mention to the gatherers? Another thing that my ex-husband would do is he would we would he would begin to have an argument. He always stirred up arguments. And you would argue your side. And he would go to the kitchen and drink three or four glasses of milk, come back and argue the exact same opposite. <laughs> and, and you would say, you just said, blah, blah, blah. and he would say, I need to start taping these, these conversations. I'm thinking, I wish we would. <laughs> you just described half of our politicians in Washington. <laughs> he would be a good it's one. Just, I just figured it out. Okay, there it is. Okay, so your husband, 25 years of abuse, you were married uh very very abusive mentally emotionally and ended up physically um we're talking about the demons of toxic relationship i was talking to dr spalding a while while ago and we both agree uh that we all agree uh that the demons are definitely the the core of toxic relationships they're enjoying it and having a heyday now tell me about your relationship with your husband how you spotted a demon in your husband. He came in one night. Um, he had been living in our travel trailer elsewhere for a while. And um, he came in one night and my children were both gone. My daughter was in college. My son was working. And um, it, there wasn't a rage incident. It wasn't that he just got mad and flipped and just began to be, be physically abusive. He, I made him mad and he grabbed both my hands totally impassive face, just that stone cold. <laughs> People who, who are familiar with a psychopath have seen this, this look and just grabbed both my hands and slowly started squeezing. And we both felt when the bones began to move. And I had been told by the counselor, don't ever let him see fear in you. Let him see anger, let him see whatever, but don't ever let him see fear in you. Well, and, wait, uh, well I'm sorry, was this a Christian counselor? Yes, it was. Christian counselor. Oh, um, right. okay. He said that the fear will will lead him on because it, it's they feed off of it. They feed off creating fear in you. He should but have he, told you you need to cast the demon out. But of I wish I had known that then. I wish I had known that. Well, then. he he didn't but during know that. This, during this period, he, we felt the bones break in my right hand. He stopped just short of breaking the left hand, and his eyes were solid black. And that night I slipped in my knot. I mean, I, the fear was there. The, the pain, it wasn't just the physical pain. It was the pain of knowing that my husband wanted to hurt me. He, want, he wanted to hurt me. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, does more damage than the physical damage. Well, now, Rena, we're talking about demons here, possessing. Do you think your husband was possessed of a demon or oppressed? I, that would be a fine line with him because at first I think he was manipulated maybe from the spiritual side. I knew it was Jacob he, he saw in our home for many years, but he just got darker and darker. Okay. That Did night his eyes turned solid black. I've always been taught that's a demon. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen it before. I've seen it myself. Okay. Uh, and by the way, with the eyes black, it's usually the pupil and the pupil has a certain shape. I don't know what your husband's yeah. looked like. It's usually the shape of two half moons, kind of a, you've seen that. And what's weird is that Christian fish without the tail. It's kind of, you know, uh, but, but the pupil is black. Okay. Um, did your husband have multiple personalities? 
he is, was never diagnosed with that to my knowledge. Okay. When we got All his right. testing results halfway through, the, the, the counselor made me leave. I have okay. no idea what the second part of the revealing was. Okay. Okay. And so I want to ask you about program multiples. Now, you, I've done many, many interviews with Russ Dizdar. I had him on my show. I've spoke with him. I know him well. And I've gone with him out uh, on the, you know, on the boots on the ground. Uh, going after uh, the perpetrators and the pedo pedophiles. Um, so we deal with program multiples quite a bit. And I did even before I met Russ. Uh, do you believe that there are program multiples that have various demons in each personality? Let's uh, say someone has five personalities. They could have three different demons of those five personalities. I think that's possible. Russ will tell you that it's not all demons. Some that some of you can cast out a demon, but you can't pa ca pass out a personality. The personalities come from splitting the the original psyche, and some of them are are demonically possessed. Some of them are not. Yeah, absolutely um, I right. With my with my ex, there was times he, he was like he was five, the, and yeah. he would he would come in, he would speak about something, walk outside, come in, and at this point, I do not know if he was switching personalities or if it was the complete mind screw he was running on me. At this point, I really don't know. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something I had mentioned off the air. Okay, I'm going to mention it to the gatherers. I believe that there are program multiples that are designed specifically to meet someone like you. I'm just using you as an example, if I may. Mm -hmm to team up with them to marry them. That's, that's their mission, okay? Remember, they're program multiple, so they have multiple personality. And they are teamed with, with a precious soul such as you, okay? Really wanting love, hungry for the truth of God. But they're programmed from the pits of hell as if a shooter who walks in and guns out a bunch of people is programmed to do that, and then they end up killing themselves. I believe that there are program multiples that are programmed since uh, from birth to go in and infect people's lives. And the question is why? And I'm going to I'm going to give you my little scenario here. The devil knows how valuable you are, and the gatherers to the kingdom. Okay, he knows that because you have the power in you. He wants to take you out. He wants to take us out. So what better way to enter through an intimate relationship of marriage to sneak, weasel their way through, right, with that great personality, than all of a sudden, boom, they flip, you know? Rena, does that make any sense to you? It does, and I'll be honest with you, David. I've honestly suspected that. L.A. Marzulli is in his book, The Cosmic Chess Match will say that we can see like we're in a cornfield. We can see about a foot in front of us and down both sides. And that the enemy is like he's on a 20 foot ladder and he can see further and God's in the airplane. And that makes really sense to me because I've had a calling on my life since I was a little girl. I'm a seminary yeah. student and I've taught the Bible my entire life. If you saw my, my bookshelves in my living room, in fact, yeah. people have often said, what are you into? <laughs> right. I truly believe that the enemy sees further than we do. And right. he sees the calling on our life when we're born. And he does put everybody and everything in our life to trip us hey, up. Hey, hey Amen. And you're one of the reasons I put a, a, I put a period at the end of that sentence. I left it open. And then when I started interviewing you, I saw your, your, your love for God and your service to the people in the world of toxic relationships, how to overcome. But then you said the one thing to me that finally the bulb went on, the light went on. 15 minutes after you were married, he did a bait and switch. He did a complete, he was a different person, right? He was, I was shocked. Uh, the first, the first poem in my book is called The Wedding Night Mayor. <laughs> because you're so, you're so shocked. You have all of this, this promise of, of this marriage and this, this life you're going to have. And um, he, he cussed out, Everybody we encountered within the first three hours refused to take me to dinner, refused to talk to me, refused any kind of marital connection. Um, it was a nightmare. So, and so, it, it never got better. 
Yeah. So, so here's this guy, Prince Charming, you know, not perfect, but good guy. And you were with him for what, a year, about a year before you married him? I knew him since fourth grade and I dated him a year before I married him. Wow. Okay. And all of a sudden, 15 minutes after you're married, he turns into, to, to, to a different person, right? Yes. So and it was amazing in front of other people, the angel came back. And at home, I was just, I was just so, you're puzzled because you, you've never, there wasn't internet then, there wasn't YouTube, yeah. you never heard of a psychopath, you never heard of narcissism, you've never heard of, I'd heard of demon possession, but, but I've never, I thought it was these really weird people out somewhere that did really bad stuff. I yeah. didn't know it was your everyday life. Well, can you say multiple personalities program multiple? Okay, so we'll leave it at there because you and I are on the same page. Uh, so what's what's the future? What's now for Rena? What about the healing process? Where are you right now through this journey? The healing process has been brutal. Part of it's been exacerbated by losing. I didn't just lose a, a crappy husband. I lost my entire world. Um, I live in a state where I know no one. No one knows where I live, including, including my children. Um, there's been two people in this house besides repairman and that very briefly. And I finally got to the point I was, I was, let's just say bordering on suicidal at one point, um, not severely so, but maybe the thought would enter an end. And God finally pinned me down. He said, are you going to live or are you going to die? And it took me about six days to really work through it. And I finally decided that I was going to live. He was not going to, to defeat me. And so then you have to ask yourself, you know, you, you can't undo what's done. You right. cannot make your own people believe the truth, including your children. And I cannot stop him from coming someday. Right. Now what? So for me, now what is I write, teach, preach, counsel, speak, and, and try to heal every human being I can. As far as I can determine my spiritual calling is raising the bar of knowledge, healing, hurting people, and spiritual warfare. And I absolutely believe they go hand in glove together. And it's because you stood on the word of God, right? I think what yes. you're saying, if you didn't stand on God, if, if you would have dealt this with this from a physical, from a, you know, uh, uh, a psychological uh, aspect, you, you wouldn't be, there'd be no deliverance, right? It's all spiritual. I don't think so. And even, even just... Him being evaluated and me being able to be in the room when we got the results, which was in interesting in itself, me knowing what happened to me, finding the support group that I did, learning about the personality disorders, narcissistic abuse, narcissistic victim syndrome. I've often wondered, how would I even frame what happened to me? But God was so gracious. I asked him again and again, Lord, show me what the answers are. And he truly has. Wow. And Rena, you've suffered for this. You're I, I, I'm going to I'm going to uh, kind of summarize what you said, but you're pretty much by yourself. It's you and God. Um, you've lost your your family, your children. Uh, obviously, you're not with your your husband. You're disconnected from relatives and you're suffering for this. And it's because you stand on the word of God, right? I truly believe that's the crux of it. Why did you lose your children? Why would they abandon you if, I mean, even if a child's not uh, saved, at least they'd have compassion for their mother. What happened? He began to manipulate them young and I did not know what was going on. He told me at one time, he, we, he had a little confession one night that I found out many things. One of the things in there was the day he saw me hold my daughter for the first time and saw what she meant to me was the day he decided I'd never have her. And that's how far back his manipulation goes. Um, he, he left my son alone till about 16 and then decided that I, I had I had got to where he couldn't get to me anymore. I just I had learned enough and had a backbone enough that that it didn't work. The only other way to get through me was through my son. So he actually programmed your children. He, he I, basically... I believe that they are brainwashed. They are what's called flying monkeys and that yeah. someday they will see it. But my son has seen me covered in bruises. Wow. And still, the, the both of my children will tell you, we have never known you to lie. We've never heard you lie, but we don't right. believe you. Wow. Um, so what would you, what advice would you give, Raina, our gatherers out there that are struggling 
with what you went through, or they have friends, family that are going through it. What's, what can you tell them? David, up till a few years ago, I would never have advised a woman to leave her husband. It's, I, I couldn't find a biblical place in it. I would never advise someone to break up a family. But, but what I can tell you now is I lived for 25 years on my faith before God, searching his word. I had every self-help book on the market, every relationship book. We were in counseling for 18 years. I lost my life. And I have come to the conclusion, even with my children, there is no relationship worth abuse. And something I tell people often, if, if abuse was the color blue, most people wouldn't call it abuse until it's dark navy. But I know now if, if I see that first little faint baby blue coming in, I get cautious. Okay. If it comes through again, I get really cautious. That third time I'm done. So your main advice is to separate, to, to get away. Uh, you're not saying necessarily go divorce, but you're saying just get away from the danger, get away from the turmoil, get away from the perpetrator, correct? God calls us to live for him. It, 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 what is the verse um, with all that is within you? And I know I've butchered that, but, but be at peace. Right. You cannot be at peace with someone determined to be at war with you, but you don't have to show up for every war you're invited to either. Amen. Amen. Look to God. Detoxing Christians. Rena, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you for spending this time with us and also for opening up your heart. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. God to bless you. Women. Sure. Rena, a special guest for tonight here on The Gathering, uh, David Hebner Live. Um, we're going to be a uh, answering some questions here. We're going to do be praise reports, and we'll be praying for you guys. Uh, please go to uh, lastevangelist.com. And if God lays it on your heart, uh, become a partner with us on this first episode. Uh, Jared, can you pull up uh, either text the uh, evangelist to 71777 or just pull up lastevangelist.com? Um, and I can't see what you're doing there, so you'll have to tell me. Uh, but you can see, okay, you can see there where you can donate uh, as, a, as a donor. But then also you can become your own fun, fundraiser. So you can start your own platform. And even if people just donate a dollar, you know, it's not the amount of money, though that's important because we have to get the job done. You guys have been so gracious. But it's what's behind it. You see, we're partners and we partner together. OK, I partner with you every Monday night because I love you and I want the truth. I love God, I love you, and I want the truth to be known. And that's why I do what I do. It sure ain't for money, okay? Would you please partner with me on lastevangelist.com or text the, the word evangelist to 71777? No amount is too small, okay? I want you as a partner. I want you involved in on this. I know there's a lot of you that haven't yet. Maybe you're not, you can't afford it, or whatever. But if God lays it on your heart, please become a partner with me, okay? Um, so uh, I want to go to the questions. One of the questions was, can program multiples, can, what was it? Can, is there a different demon for each it, personality oh, when you have multiple personalities? Okay, when you have multiple personalities, is there a di different demon for various personalities? I kind of talked about this. Yes, there could be but there doesn't have to be, okay? The reason that a program multiple is split is because they have various jobs they need to do, okay? Now, it could be that a demon has gotten in there and possessed a certain personality, but there's a difference between personality and the demon, okay? So you have to know if you're dealing with a demon or dealing with various personalities, but the first thing you have to understand is are you dealing with a multiple uh, pers uh, program multiple. All right. Um, and then we had one more question. Um, Don was talking about, he's still battling with demons. Don, we're still praying for you, brother. Uh, Don, and I'm sure there's others out there that are in toxic relationships with demons. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but there are people, and I know I've gone through it, where we've just battled the dark side. There is no physical person involved. It's just a spiritual battle, you know, and I've gone through it. 
And, and let me tell you something. I am not forgetting you, okay? You are a very important part of this ministry, and we're praying for you. And it's what you're going through is real, brother and sister, because you're dealing with the spiritual world. We are spirits, all right? We just take on this flesh for a temporary time. Um, so let's go to, do we have any praise reports? We do, yeah. Pam talks about how she was a victim of abuse, and she said, God can take you through anything, even being alone. He holds your hand. He teaches you. He always reminds you of what he has for you in eternity. And, and that was from Pam. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yeah. And let's do one more praise report. Uh, Michelle got a good report from her oncologist. Yes, that's right. No cancer, right? Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, it's important that we praise God of all the prayers that we do and every Monday we go to the Lord in prayer and he answers these and I, I get emails and they're miracles. It's so important to give God the credit and to acknowledge him. And that's what we're doing tonight. We're giving you the credit Lord. And we're going to go to the Lord uh, right now. If, if you're with somebody you love, take their hand. If you're on, uh, if you've got shoes on, you can take them off. Uh, we're on holy ground. We're going to go to the Lord. This is so important. Why? Because the topic that God has brought into our lives tonight and the information that the Holy Spirit has revealed, and I promise you it's the Holy Spirit. This is nothing I could ever orchestrate. This is, and I'm not saying I'm God talking, but I'm saying God works through people, places, situations, and he has worked here tonight, okay? And it's so important for us to carry through what God intends us to do. What is that? the power of prayer. Tonight, we're going to cast out the demons of toxicity, the demons of toxic relationships. There's many out there that are suffering. Right now, the demons are being put on notice. They're shaking, they're trembling, and I take joy in that. I don't take pride in it. I take joy because Jesus, what's the two things he did? He cast out demons and he healed people. What are the two things that we do? We cast out demons and we heal people. God heals people. God uses us. Okay. We're his hands and feet. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. I want to thank you for Rena tonight. Thank you for Dr. Spaulding. I want to thank you for my wife for helping. I want to thank you for the uh, prayer warriors, uh, uh, for others who are getting on chat and, and helping to orchestrate that, for everyone involved in this ministry. I thank you, Lord, for each and every person. I ask for a special anointing on each and every person tonight in this ministry and each and every gatherer that's listening to the sound of my voice. I ask, Lord, that you can... There are people out there right now, Father, that are so hurting that they're contemplating suicide. I'm asking for an immediate uh, uh, comfort for them. There's people out there that are confused. They've been in relationships and they've been in this so long that they don't even know what, what right and what left is, up and down. I'm asking, Lord, that you touch their mind of Christ. And right now their thinking is supernaturally straightened out. They are healed mentally, physically, emotionally. Father, I'm asking that that child that's being abused right now, that that abuse will stop. I'm asking that you protect the, uh, your children. Father, thank you for giving us the knowledge that we are able to cast out demons like your son did. The understanding that we are able to heal the way your son did. Not because of our power, but because of yours. There's a person out there that's lonely and she has nobody. And she's been crying for somebody. Father, I'm asking that you send someone into her life, whether it's friendship, intimacy, whatever you have for her, that you can, as a miracle, as a witness to a miracle, you'll bring that person into their life to comfort them. They're hurting, Lord, they're lonely. I'm praying for a father out there that can't see his children. 
He's been told to stay away from his kids. I'm praying for him. I'm asking, Lord, that that father, whoever's listening to me right now, you need to go through repentance. I don't know what it is you've done, but I'm asking right now that father gets on his knees and cries out to you in repentance. There's families out there that have been ripped to pieces. I'm asking for restoration. There's a woman out there that has uh, injury in her chest and her stomach. There's something going on. I'm asking God that you will touch her and heal her. I don't know if it's a digestion or whatever. It's a heart issue, but I'm asking for a reconstruction of whatever's been damaged and for a restoration physically. Praying for all the mothers out there that are contemplating murdering their babies, that those babies are now saved. Those babies will not be aborted. We thank you, Father. And devil, we put you on notice. You have no right to the children of God, and you are hereby gone. We thank you, Lord, for this power you have given your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, everybody. God bless you all. It's so good to be with you. If you'll send me an email at david at davidhevener.com so I can pray with you. I pray for each and every email that comes in. Um, I send it out to my uh, close circle of prayer warriors. Then we send it out to our 600 prayer warriors. We pray for you. God is a God of miracles. He's a God of healing. All we have to do is just let go and let God. OK, so we're going to see you next week. Please remember to go to lastevangelist.com, become a partner, text the word evangelist to 71777. Let's get this done. Let's tell the truth. Let's turn media around. All right. Thank you for being with me. And just remember, you've never really lived until you found something worth dying for. That's the truth. God bless you.